Hello, my name is Vincent Kirk, and today in this video I'm going to describe how radars work. As an example of a radar, we're going to use the coffee can radar, also known as the cantenna radar, that was developed by the engineers at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory. This radar utilizes a FMCW waveform, a frequency modulated continuous waveform. We'll take a look at the two waveforms that are generated by this radar using a Tektronix multi-domain oscilloscope layer. The operating frequency of this radar is 2.4 gigahertz. The radar was designed to be able to detect a small car, a small target, that's about 1,000 meters away in range. I'm also going to walk you through a short demonstration of how the radar can detect the variable speed of a metal fan, detect its Doppler. For this demonstration, we'll need to connect the radar to a laptop. Specifically, we'll take the output from the low pass filter through an audio jack, input that into the mic port of the laptop, and use the sound card in the laptop to digitize the analog signal. That digitized signal will then be streamed through a signal processing software called MATLAB. MATLAB is a computational software developed by MathWorks. So let's get started. First, you have the power supply beginning with two boxes of AA batteries. The power supply from the AA batteries are going to be used to generate our waveform and to filter and amplify our signals. Next to the power supply, we have a amplifier and a low pass filter. This is going to be the final stage that our received signal is going to go through in order to amplify it and to filter out those um, unwanted frequencies. So we'll low pass filter that signal that's coming in. Over here on the left, you have the modulation circuitry or the waveform generator. The waveform generator is going to drive what's called a voltage controlled oscillator. It can either drive that voltage controlled oscillator at a constant voltage generating a single frequency of let's say 2.4 gigahertz or we can set the electronics through these variable resistors to sweep through a voltage from 2 to 3 volts therefore generating frequencies between 2.4 and 2.8 gigahertz. The output of the VCO, since the VCO has some amplification, goes through an attenuator. That attenuator is used in order to protect your amplifier that is then going to take the transmit signal and send it to a splitter. That splitter sends half of the signal out through this blue wire to our transmit can and then it takes the other half through of the splitter output and sends it directly to the local oscillator port of a mixer. The signal that's going to be transmitted out of the transmit can will go out into free space. That electromagnetic energy will reflect off of a target and it will come back in through the receive can. The receive can is connected by this blue wire to an amplification stage, which then feeds the mixer's RF port. The mixer then takes the input of what we transmitted, that local oscillator, and the RF signal of what we received, and it compares those two signals, and it outputs that comparison and sends it to our video amplifier and filtering stage at which point we then take that signal off of the board and send it into a laptop. Okay, so now I've connected the Tektronix multi-domain oscilloscope and I've turned the radar off 
So what we're looking at is a zero voltage response in the time domain. What do I mean by that? Um, the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is voltage and we currently have zero volts being measured. So let's turn the radar on and see what happens. So when we turn the radar on, we immediately see that we get a voltage response of about 2.6 or so volts, constant voltage over time. Now, this will be the waveform that we use in order to detect the Doppler or the velocity of a moving target. But I also said that this radar can generate a variable or a FM, frequency modulated continuous waveform or a ramp signal. And here's an example of that sawtooth output coming off of the waveform generator that's used to drive the voltage controlled oscillator. And as you can see here, it's ramping up over a period of approximately 20 milliseconds and it ramps up roughly between 2 volts to 3 volts in magnitude. That's the difference between the trough and the peak. Now let's take a look at our signal in the frequency domain. So if we look at our signal in the frequency domain, we see the frequency jumping around between 2.4 gigahertz and 2.8 gigahertz. And this peak here is representing the output peak frequency. So now we've moved from looking at the um, voltage in the time domain to actually looking at the frequency that we'll be transmitting in the frequency domain. So we have a nice clean peak here and it's going to sweep back and forth between 2.8 and 2.4 gigahertz. Now if I just look at our constant voltage signal, we'll see that sweeping voltage stop and just kind of hone right in on roughly 2.4 gigahertz. And that's going to be the frequency of the signal that we're going to be sending. It's going to be a constant um, continuous wave frequency that we'll use to measure the velocity of the fan or the Doppler of a moving target. Okay, so now I've connected the radar to the laptop and I started MATLAB and I started the Doppler signal processing MATLAB script and you can see we have our radar set up here on a um, table pointing to, towards a fan that has three variable speeds and I'm going to turn that fan on to its first position. And as I turn the fan on to its first position, you should see the output of the MATLAB's signal processing software start to detect the constant speed of the radar. Sorry, the constant speed of the fan. So the radar is now detecting the motion of the fan and it says it's rotating at roughly 3.7 meters per second. Now let's speed that fan motion up to the second speed. See what the radar tells us. So now I've increased the speed of the fan and you'll see the radar measuring its Doppler now at about four meters per second. Let's see what happens or what the radar will do if I crank it up one more speed on our old general electric metal fan here. Crank it up one more notch to the highest speed, 
you'll once again see here where we've moved from about 4 meters per second now to a higher speed of 4.4 meters per second. So what's happening is the radar is transmitting a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz roughly. It's taking that frequency that it's receiving, those two signals, what was transmitted and what was received, are going into a mixer. The difference or the output of that mixer is the motion of that fan that is translated to the speed of its rotational velocity, or what we're demonstrating here to be about 4.4 meters per second. So then if I turn off the fan quickly, you'll see how the radar velocity sensing rolls off quickly until it doesn't sense any motion of the fan. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Vince Kirk, and I'm an electrical engineer. I sometimes teach classes in radar systems engineering, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you.